And now Margaret Spellings, who served as Secretary of Education under President George W. Bush and then went on to head the 17 institutions comprising the North Carolina system. Thank you, Margaret, for being back with us. Uh, let me pick up on where Randy Weingarten was. Basically, she said 88 percent of her membership would like to go back in the classroom, provided they had testing on the order of professional sports. That's not necessarily realistic. What is keeping school, school children and parents and teachers out of the classroom right now? Well, I think it's uncertainty, uh, but but as we get more vaccine penetration, that that goes away, and we all know that being out of school is taking an enormous toll on our children, their mental health, and above all, their educational progress, and our economy. Their futures are going to suffer mightily if we don't get them back in school and start triaging the learning loss that they've suffered this year. Uh, my understanding from public health officials is that the children are safer in the classroom than they are at home. Uh, if that's true, I, again, I just don't understand why we aren't already back in the classroom. I understand there's uncertainty. I understand there's some risk. There's some risk for all of us. But if we're really trying to solve this equation right. for the best interest of the children, wouldn't they all be back in the classroom? Well, the data does tell us that you're you're safer in your school than in your community overall. And so another great reason, let's get our students back in school. And frankly, you know, school and schools and school districts have been very accommodating for particular exigent situations where a student needs to learn virtually only. Uh, and there are options. But I think, you know, We've seen our private schools open successfully in person, and those often disadvantaged stu advantaged students are making progress and speeding ahead. And it's those students in our public schools that are, frankly, uh, being underserved uh, by not being in school. Secretary Spellings, uh, let's pick up on the loss of education that we're suffering. I, I talked to somebody from the Penn Wharton budget model yesterday who studied 63 school districts in and around Philadelphia. And basically what they came up with is for elementary school children who were not able to go into the classroom, they will lose 10 percent of their lifetime earnings. That's overall. And it's double that loss for black children because they tend to be excluded from going back to the classroom more than that. Can we make up that kind of loss? We can, we absolutely can, and we have to triage immediately through extending the school year and extending the school day through tutoring programs, using research-based practices around reading and math development that we know works. Education is sequential. If we don't get these kids caught up, they, as you say, and as that study says, uh, will suffer big consequences throughout their lifetimes. And obviously our economy will suffer as well. And one of the things that I learned from that study was, in fact, there's a differential in the loss between reading on the one hand and math on the other. Math, it, what the study indicates is it's almost worthless to do remote learning. The, the, the increased knowledge from remote learning was almost zero. So is that your experience in general? Is there a differentiation between, for example, reading and math on remote learning? You know, the point you're making is that data and assessment are critical to correctly diagnosing and solving the particular issues at hand, individual students, classrooms, and school systems. But yes, I mean, back to the point about sequential learning and being guided by a teacher, a tutor, uh, effective curriculum. You know, we know what to do, but we have to get e these kids in school, diagnose where they are today, and triage, especially around reading and math, those basic building block skills. There are real educational losses that are being documented even as we speak. But one of the things I think we've really focused on more is that the schools, the public schools for many children do a lot more than just educate. They are places where you get fed. There are people who pay attention to you, make sure that you're okay, that nothing's going on in the home that's bad. But what kind of losses are we having in terms of social services from not having the public schools fully up and operating? Well, absolutely, you're right, and they are stark. And so mental health issues, food services, vaccinations, health services, uh, supports around uh, you know, child abuse and the like. I mean, it's really, really, I think we've seen in the pandemic this last year, the critical nature of our schools to the functioning of our families, the functioning of our economy, and of course, the growth of our young people. Uh, one more question, and that's on something you know terribly well, and that's higher education. What has this pandemic meant, do you think, for higher education? 
Well, it's, you know, good news, bad news. The good news is we've learned that we can adapt. Uh, we've learned that we can use technology more effectively as uh uh, you know, we've made a lot of progress in a short period of time, but we've also learned that those relationships, just like in K-12 education, are so absolutely critical to progress and that students need to be with their peers. They need to be with adults who care about them uh, and they need to be on task toward graduation and making progress. So a lot of the same lessons that we're, we have learned the hard way in K-12. I, I also read at least that perhaps community colleges have been hit particularly hard. In terms of enrollment decline, absolutely. And when you think about the kind of student that attends a community college, that's often that person that's getting reskilled for a new job because they've been laid off, uh, because affordability is an issue. And so uh, we'll see, obviously, the, the stimulus funds will help support uh, institutions and students uh, that are trying to gain those skills. But yes, it's a worrisome sign, not only for them, but for our economy as well. Secretary Spellings, thank you so very much for joining us today. That's Margaret Spellings. She's the former U.S. Education Secretary.